Everybody, I am back again. We are going to be talking about solving two-step equations, okay? Now, two-step equations can be something that is a little scary for my six pre-A peers um, because thus far they've only done, or you guys have only done, the one-step equations, but we're going to pick up where that leaves off, and we're going to start talking about two-step, one-variable equations. Just one additional step in making sure that you have these things clear in your mind to make sure that you are successful while doing that. So, First things first, we are going to actually uh, take a look at the step-by-step -step procedure, okay? Now, first things first, um, these are just my rules. You're going to set up your equation. Now, remember, you may draw a picture to help you bridge the gap. Now, bridging that gap means that... Um, in some cases, we need a little bit of support. So the reason that we start with the modeling portion and the part where we're actually dealing with manipulatives is because we want to try to picture it in our brain and sometimes moving things around, it helps us to uh, make a clearer picture for ourselves. Then you're gonna make sure that you uh, draw uh, different defining lines to make sure that you see what's on one side of the equal sign as opposed to the other and ensure things are set up neatly. You're going to then use the additive inverse to create zero pairs as we did with our models. Uh, and if you have a, a question about that, go to my modeling equations video for a little refresher. You can then use the inverse operation to isolate your variable. And then, of course, solve for that variable. Now, what if I am unsure if my answer is correct? What if I didn't pot, put the right sign, etc.? What I'm going to do then is I'm going to use substitution to verify my answer. Now, this is a rule specifically for inequalities. Now, there's not going to be a real difference in the method of solving. However, a negative coefficient will require a sign change. Now, as I was saying before that beep came through from the office, um, inequalities, again, um, do require that a negative coefficient will require a sign flip, but I'll get more into that once we actually get to explaining. Okay, so what I'm going to do is always I'm going to go ahead and flip to the actual real examples. So let's see. Okay. So we're going to take a look, and this is Teak number 7.11a, just in case you wanted to go and look in the book. First things first, let's go ahead and start with our uh, first rule. All right, so um, as I said, I'm going to set up my equation. I am not going to be drawing a picture because, again, the goal at this point is for us to be uh, bridging the gap from those models to actually the more abstract, which will be done on paper. Now, as I said, also, I want us to go ahead and draw a line, okay, to do a separation between what is on this side of the equal sign and what is on that side of the equal sign. I just want to know, because I need to get this number, that this is my coefficient, this is my uh, variable. I want to make sure that those are on the uh, same side of the equal sign. Let me focus this a little bit. Okay, now... Let's go ahead and see what we need to do to get the coefficient in the variable by itself. In this case, I'm going to refer back to uh, step number three, which is to use the additive inverse to create zero pairs. Now, when I say zero pairs, that means that when I add this number and that number, so a positive three and a negative three, when I add these together or combine those, that will equal zero at this point. Whatever I do to one side of the equal sign, I must do to the other. So at this point, I'm going to draw myself a line. Then I'm going to move on, and I'm going to finish out this operation. So this becomes 9s because this is 0. I could say 9s plus 0, but there's no need to. I'm then also going to subtract um, 3 from 57. That leaves me with 54. OK, so what I'm telling you is that some number times nine, some number S times nine is going to equal 54. Now, intuitively, a lot of people uh, already know what they need to do or what they need to multiply by this number. But we're going to use the inverse operation. This symbolizes multiplication. So the inverse or opposite of that is going to be uh, division. So I'm going to divide both sides by nine. When I divide these sides by 9, that this cancels each other out. This leaves S. 54 divided by 9 is going to give me 6. So 6 would be my answer here. Now, if I was going to do a check, 
I would simply place or substitute in my the number that I got as my answer back into the problem to see if it will calculate to be the exact same thing. 9 times 6 is 54, 54 plus 3, okay? This is 57 equals 57. Does that equal? Of course it does, so that is correct. That That's my check. That needs to be happening for almost every single problem, um, if not all of them, if you are unsure. Let's move on to an equation with a negative coefficient. Remember this number that's attached to my variable is called the coefficient. All right, first things first, separate everything out. I need to figure out what's over here with the variable and the coefficient. That is a positive 12, so how do I create 0? All right, you guessed it. I'm going to subtract 12 from both sides, putting this together. That's going to equal 0. When I subtract 12 from this side, this becomes what? Negative 48 and combine that with a negative 12. When I do that, it's going to equal what exactly? Okay. Now, this is going to equal a negative 60. And this is going to be equal to negative 3y. So what happens, again, my rules of division, when I divide both sides, this is the inverse operation. So remember, once again, write your problem down neatly, draw your line, use the additive inverse to get this by itself. I then um, uh, boil that down to negative 3y is equal to negative 60. I'm going to use the inverse operation of what's happening here. The inverse is uh, division. When I divide a negative divided by a negative, that becomes positive negative divided by negative becomes positive. So negative 60 divided by negative 3 becomes 20. So one more time, I'm going to plug this in as my check. That is, oh, sorry, negative 3 times 20 plus 12 is equal to negative 48. This becomes negative 60 plus 12. Combine those together, it becomes 48. 48 is, or negative 48, I apologize, is equal to negative 48. Okay? Moving right along to my inequalities. Now, the inequality by definition means that they, uh, the sign indicates that these are not equal. In fact, they are not. Okay? So, at this point, I have a fraction with my coefficient. Okay? This is going to be a little bit trickier than the others, but I'll show you how it goes. So let's go ahead and draw our line here. So once we draw our line there, uh, we're going to separate what's on one side of the um, inequality symbol and what's on the other side. So in this case, in order for me to get this variable in this coefficient, and for the record, the coefficient is going to be one half when you have a letter over a number, there's an assumed one here, so that becomes one half, okay? So with that said, let's go ahead and add 22 to both sides. When I add 22 to both sides, what does that become? I'll give you a moment to, to think about it. It's going to become 70. Now, I'm going to bring this down again. Um, this, of course, is 0. This becomes f over 2. Now, because of the fact that a fraction is division, in order to um, isolate my variable, I'm going to multiply by the reciprocal of f over 2. There's an assumed 1 here, so your reciprocal, your reciprocal sorry, becomes 2 over 1 when you flip those over. Okay, Multiplying that by 2, as you notice, these two will cancel each other out, leaving one f at the top, f over 1 becomes just f, okay? So moving my work down, okay, and I'm just going to copy what's here down here. I just wanted to, to show you that. So f is going to equal, oh, I'm sorry. Let me do this. I have a little bit of difficulty with the pencils, okay? f is actually less than, not equal to. What I'm saying is that this equals that. So don't be confused, okay? So F, and we have to remember that I needed to multiply this side 
by two as well. So I'm going to go back up here and, and just show you. So this cancels each other out just to become F, which is why I wrote it here. I needed to put my reciprocal over here as well. So 70 times two over one. So this becomes F is less than, put these both over one. When I multiply them across, it becomes 140 over one. 140 over one is just 140. Okay, so my answer choices are anything that is less than 140. So how do I check these kinds of problems? The, the way that I check these is I would find a value that satisfies this statement. So what value is less than 140? I want to make it easy on myself. I'm just going to say zero, okay? So when I go back in to check my work, I'm going to put zero over two, okay? That is allowed. Zero over two. Um, minus, minus 22 is less than 48, okay? So 0 minus 22 becomes negative 22. Is this statement correct, that negative 22 is less than 48? Absolutely that is, so that value looks to be correct, okay? Now let's go ahead and move on to our very last one. This is the one with a negative coefficient. All right. First things first, this is a T, okay, I know it's a little bit, it looks the same. Okay, I'm going to draw my line. At this point, this should sort of be sort of standard at this point. We're going to go ahead and um, add a negative 9 to both sides. This becomes negative 3T because this is 0. I don't have to worry about that. Greater than or equal to negative 30. Here we go again where we are dividing by a negative coefficient. But as we said in that uh, problem number six, or I'm sorry, uh, rule number six, with inequalities when you're dividing or multiplying by negative coefficient, that means that you need to flip the sign. So this now becomes t because three negative three t divided by negative three is just t. I'm going to change my symbol to go the other way. And then this becomes 10. I want to... Uh, use a value that is uh, less than or equal to 10. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to, again, make it easy on myself. I want to use zero. Okay, so the check says I'm going to plug this back into my original problem. This is negative three times zero. Okay, and I'm going to put extra emphasis around this that I want to do that first. Plus nine is going to be greater than or equal to negative 21. Okay. So this is 0. Negative 3 times 0 is just 0. There is no such thing as negative 0. 0 is 0. It's unique. Okay? So 0 plus 9 is greater than or equal to negative 21. Now, 9 is greater than or equal to negative 21. Is this correct? This check is right. Now, I understand that this can be a little tricky. If this was tricky for you, what I want you to do is I do want you to go ahead and go back through this one more time. I'm just going to show you a full copy of the page. Okay. I want you to go back over this one more time by looking it uh, over. Um, you can look through your notes. You may come to class to ask me a question, or you may show up to tutorials on Tuesdays and Thursdays. And as always, I'll see you in class tomorrow.